Greetings, it's your girl Sayuri Smith Timmons here with another episode of Mass Exodus Radio. Thank you for tuning in today. I praise God for you. I thank God for you. And I just want to let you know that I am just very, 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 very blessed to be able to come to you again um, on the Kingdom Influencer broadcast with Mass Exodus Radio. Um, Today we're going to be talking about the benefits of being in God's presence. And before I start, I'm going to pray. Father God, thank you, God, for everything that you are doing in our life, Lord God. I just thank you for the ability to get in your presence. And I thank you for the word that you have given me for this topic today. I pray that all of the listeners will benefit and be able to get a revelation from you based on the words that you give me today on this show. And I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bless each and every listener and just make ways in the wilderness for them and just come through for them. And allow them to understand who you are, not just what you have for them. And I just pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. So, amen. So, the name of this show is In His Presence. And there are so many benefits to being in God's presence. Um, I was studying the word and it was, um, I saw somebody, one of my Facebook friends had experienced death in the family. And one of the scriptures that always comes to mind, you know, and a lot of times I see when people experience that uh, is that we we give the scripture um, that is better to be. I mean, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight. And as I was fasting a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was hungry and I just decided to think about what my spirit person looked like, my spirit man looked like, and just separate that from my body and just take my spirit and focus on that and not be worried about what my body is doing. And then this scripture came back to my mind. And so it took on a whole new meaning for me. And I wanted to share that with you because I think that Other people can benefit from this thought process of understanding what it means to be in God's presence. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. It says they are willing to be absent from the body. To be present with the Lord. And when you think about that, it's like, well, why do I have to leave my body to be in the presence of God? And last week we spoke about, we spoke about um, exodus from sin. And as we think about our body and sin, this is where sin comes from, is our body. Us trying to do what we feel like we want to do, us Responding to the urges from our body, us overeating, you know, having um, sex with people that we're not married to, uh, having interactions that are not godly is more than likely coming from a place where you're doing what you want and not doing what God would desire you to do. And so when you want to, when you think about them having to choose, because it says, I will, and I'm willingly, I would rather be present from the body. I would rather be present, absent from the body. I would rather be absent. You'd be absent from yourself just to be present with the Lord. Yes, that's what this is saying. You would rather be absent from yourself so that you can be present with the Lord. That's deep. You're absent from yourself. You can't even show up for yourself. Why? Last week we spoke about it. When you're fighting yourself to be free from sin, you can't even listen to what you come up with. You you want to be present with the Lord. Why? So that the Lord will speak into you. So that the Lord, you give up your, you, you're, you're letting him speak into your spirit. And you're not being distracted by what your body wants. You're not being distracted. And when we're not being distracted by what our body wants, 
then we can better do what it is that God wants us to do. Right. That makes sense. When we do what God wants us to do, that's how we qualify for the blessings that we're asking him for. More than likely, we're asking God for something. We want something from him, but we have to do things to get it. And a lot of times we're just not willing to do what we're supposed to do to get it. You know, and that's the that's the thing that we have to figure out how to do. And that's what this is telling us. It's telling us that we need to be willing to be absent from our body so that we can be present with him. Does that make sense? If it don't, that's something for you to meditate on. Because when we when we are absent from our bodies, that means that we're focusing on our spirit. We're focusing on our spirit. And when we're focusing on that, then we are neglecting. And see, this is how the enemy use us against ourselves. It's to make us feel like we need what he have for us. Hmm. So the amplified version of this says, yes, we have confident and hopeful courage and we are pleased rather to be away from home out of the body and be at home with the Lord. Who wants to leave home? Home is comfort. Home is where you can be you. Home is where you can just do what you want to do. Nobody can judge you. It's your house. Can't nobody tell you what to do in your house. Right? But see, when you come out of that place where it's your house, where you run things and you are. And see, that's the thing too. What this is saying. It's saying that you're away from home when you're at your house. (laughs) You're away from home when you're in your body. When you're living through your body, you're not really doing the best for yourself. You're not at home. You're not, that's not where you should feel comfortable. You should be more comfortable. You should have, you should have more comfort in the presence of the Lord. And this is saying that we would, I would rather be at home with the Lord to be with the Lord is at home, not your body. The enemy is going to tell you the opposite of what's true. So you're going to feel like being in your body is your home. But when you take time to sit and meditate on the word after God gives you a scripture that's that's empowering you, that's giving you your freedom, allowing you to take the power from the enemy. And you sit and you think about that and you try to figure out how do I live that way? How do I live this scripture? That's how you meditate on the word. How do I live this scripture? And you ask God, well, how do I put this into my life? How does I, how do I make this work for me? How do I stand on this word? How do I live this word? How does this word come alive in my life? Hmm. Then you will understand the benefit of being away from home because you're going to be in the presence of the Lord and he's going to be talking to you and he's going to probably be telling you, Almost the opposite of what you've been doing or tweaking things that you've been doing to show you your bad motives, to show you that, hey, when you do good and it's not right, I need for you. When you do this for somebody, I need your heart to be right now. When you give somebody something, to eat, when you give out money to people on the street or whatever you do that's for somebody else, make sure that your heart match that. See, when you get in the presence of God, he will start to show you your heart and help you match his heart. If he's using you, you got to have his heart. And if you want his heart, you have to get in his presence. If you never get in his presence, how do you know that what you're doing is for him? How do you know that? Just because it's good don't mean it's right. Just because it's right for somebody else to do don't mean it's what you need to be doing. God says, stop following everybody. Jesus said, follow me. Follow him. But you can't follow somebody if they're not in your presence. How are you going to follow somebody and you're not around them? How can you follow somebody and you're not around them? And I'm not talking about on social media where all you got to do is log on and just click follow. And every time they do something, they pop up on your feed. If that's what you want to do, you do that with God. You tune in to God like that. Get on your Bible app every day. Read some scriptures and figure out what it is that God is putting out every day. What is this? What what something from the word that he's telling you f- directly from him? 
It's okay to follow some preachers too. It's okay to follow, you know, listen to some YouTube stuff just like this right here. This might, you might be listening to this on YouTube, but you have to be seeking him out to be in his presence so that he can give you revelation to make sure that what you're doing with your life is right, not just good. Robin Hood was good. He stole, though. <laughs> he robbed the rich and gave to the poor. In his head, he was blessing folks. And depending on who you ask, they might agree. But what's right? Was it right? I guess it might have been the right thing, too, depending on who you ask, right? But you got to get in God's presence so that he can reveal wisdom to you. In God's presence, there's fullness of joy. That's another benefit. Of being in God's presence. The fullness of joy. Can't come from the enemy. The fullness of joy. (laughs) Comes from God. That's Psalm 16 and 11. You will show me the path. Of life. In your presence. is fullness of joy. At your right hand. There are pleasures forevermore. When you have pleasures. When he have pleasures forevermore. That means that when you're in his presence, you're going to experience that. You're going to experience that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's That's amazing. And it's so hard to get joy when you are just trying to do good. And that's why a lot of people who do good feel empty and helpless and because they're not in God's presence. They're not in his presence enough to understand that they should have joy. When they get in God's presence, they're going to have joy. And then he's going to reveal to them what he needs, to, what they need to do. And then they're going to be go out into the world and be righteous and not just good. That's Psalm 16 and 11. That's amazing. You will show me the path of life. And, and see, when you get in his presence, he will, he will show you what you need to be doing with yourself. A lot of times people are frustrated and upset because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. But the key to that right here is telling you. You will show me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy. It's amazing that, you know, a lot of people want to stay away from God until they get stuff right. But they don't understand that when they get in his presence, they can get right. (laughs) Regardless of how wrong you are, when you get in his presence, you get right. But then a lot of times people are not trying to hear how they wrong. So they stay wrong. Because they don't want to hear how they were wrong. Therefore, they could never get right. And the Bible is telling you right here that in his presence, he will tell you the path. He will give you the right path. But you cannot allow the enemy to tell you that you can't afford to be over there because all they're going to do is put you down and make you feel bad and do this and that to you. No, they're going to help you. But you have to look at it as help. If you're not looking at it as help, it ain't going to help you. If you're going to look at it as it's condemning you and putting you down, that's how you're going to feel. But when you understand that you got to get in God's presence so that you can have the right path, so that you can have joy. You're not going to have it. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. God has selected for his purpose the insignificant and base things of the world and the things that are despised and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing. So that he might reduce to nothing the things that are so that nobody can boast in the presence of God. That's why a lot of people avoid the presence of God is because they want to be able to brag on themselves. Look what I did. Look at what all my hard work accomplished for me. A lot of people are in competition with God. You got a lot of people going around saying that they are God. Because God is inside of them, they are God. No, that ain't true. God made you so you are of God, but you are not God. When you have that mentality, it keeps you from the presence of God for real. And there are so many benefits to being in his presence, but you will never experience it. If you too focus on making sure that you are elevated, you are worshiped, you are uh, exalted. In this scripture, that was first Corinthians chapter one through uh, verse, uh, verse 28 through 29. God has selected for his purpose, the insignificant things of the world 
and the things that are despised and treated with contempt, even things that are nothing so that he might reduce to nothing the things that are something so that no one may be able to boast in the presence of God. See, this is the thing too. When you get in the presence of God and you are nothing, he makes you something. (laughs) This is what this scripture is telling you. God has selected for his purpose insignificant things of the world. If you're feeling insignificant, if you're feeling like you're nothing, if you're feeling like nobody can use you, nobody can have, you know, nobody can benefit from you. This scripture is telling you how much of a lie that is because God is selecting that and he's making it something because the world is saying that is nothing. God is doing that. Why? So that nobody will be able to brag around him. He will get all of the glory when you're elevated, when you're promoted, when you are seen, when you are celebrated. God will be glorified because you know you are nothing. I raise my hand right now. Hey, they, he talking about me. I was a stripper. He selected me. Jesus. Jesus, thank you. God selected me for his purpose. I was insignificant and base. The bottom. They call it basic in the world. Like the slang, they say basic. She's so basic. That was me. The basic things of the world and the things that are despised and treated with contempt. Who, if not a stripper, is despised and treated with contempt by people who are thinking that there's somebody in God. Uh, I don't know who is. I mean, hey, strippers are, okay? That was me. The things that are despised and treated with contempt. The thing about being a dancer is that a lot of people want to celebrate you and they hate you at the same time. They don't know how to feel about you. They can't, they don't want to help you. They don't want to do anything when when you're having a downtime. And this is where scriptures for strippers come in. Scriptures for egg strippers is on its way. Uh, It is being birthed as we, as this broadcast is going forth right now, because these women are despised. These women are treated with contempt and the thing, and they, and they think, and they're treated as nothing, but God is telling us, Jesus, thank you. That the things that are nothing, he's going to make them something. And then the things and the people who think there's something, he's going to reduce them down to nothing. So that nobody can say, hey, I'm better than you. And, and, and they will be able to do that in God's presence. See this, we got we to get in God's presence so that we're able to understand how he can use us. A lot of times we're not, we're not functioning at our, at our highest capacity is because we're trying to figure out how we can benefit from what we do. Everything we do, we want to benefit from. We want to make sure we come up. We want to make sure we're good. We want to make sure that we are um, capitalizing off of what it is that God has given us. And I'm going to say something. When you let God use you, you don't just suffer and everybody else benefit off you. There are blessings and benefit. There's favor you walk in. God will give you whatever it is you need. Then he'll throw some wants in there from time to time. But if that's your motive and that's the only thing you want, you haven't been in his presence. Because he will give you joy and it won't come from you just having things from the world. Joy is what is one of the fruits of the spirit. And I'm going to have to do a show on that because fruit of the spirit is something that the enemy cannot give you. And when you're living for yourself and you're living in the world, those are the first things that you lose. Let me tell you how I know, because I worked in the club. I got all the money I could get my hands on at any time I wanted to. So I had freedom of time. I had unlimited access to cash. Didn't have to report it nowhere. Didn't nobody know what I was getting. I got money and my joy left. I had happiness, but my joy left. Your morals is wrapped up in how you make and spend money. That's a whole nother show too. So, you know, the fruit of the spirit, my spirit was suffering because of what my body was getting. My God, mm. my spirit began to suffer because I was willingly staying in my body. I was present in my body and I was abandoning my spirit. Like second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight addresses it. 
It says we are confident. We are willing. We, we rather be absent from the body and to be present, to be in order to be present with the Lord. I was the opposite. I was trying to be all the way in the body, you know, making sure my body was right. Didn't spend too much time on it. I didn't need that much attention to my body. I just need to make sure that I was, uh, doing what I need to do to get my money. Period. I'm at work. I'm dancing eight hours. I'm doing eight hours of aerobics on some stilettos. That's how it felt. (laughs) Early two thousands. That's what dancing was about. You dancing hard. You dancing a long time and you dancing on some stilts. And my body was being crushed, but I was there in my body making sure I was there. My spirit was being abandoned. I didn't take any time to nurture my spirit. I didn't take any time to get in God's presence to ask him what he thought about what I was doing. Cause I was too busy feeling like I'm getting blessed with money, but guess what? The enemy can bless you with things too, guys. I need you to know that. And a lot of times we're asking God to bless us through the enemy and we want what the enemy have and we'll take it and then thank God for it. When God did send it, but we don't know that because we haven't been in God's presence. We just feel like God going to follow us around. Why? Because God is everywhere, right? God is omnipotent. He's everywhere at the same time. So I ain't got to get in his presence. I'm always in his presence. No, when you make it intentional, when you are intentionally getting in his presence and seeking his face, seeking his will, seeking him, looking for him, trying to figure it out, trying to get to where he is. It's a whole nother level of revelation. It's a whole nother level of relationship. How much of a friend are you if this person always got to find? I mean, you just feel like, oh, they're around. They're around. They're good. I ain't got to reach out to them. Hmm. What kind of friendship is that? Would you be in a friendship with somebody that y'all don't really talk like that? Now, I got some friends that have my friends for a long time. We don't talk a whole lot. But when we talk, we talk. But a friend is somebody that you seek out from time to time and you check on them and you see what's going on with them. You see what they need, right? But if you just feel like, oh, yeah, they good. And whenever I need her, she'll come through for me. She good. I know she good. I ain't got to ask her what she needs. I'll just call her when I need something because she my friend. That's a lot. That's how people do God. They don't get in God's presence. Do you go over your friend's house or every time you see your friend, they come to you? What kind of person are you? You got to get in God's presence so that he can help you develop you into the right person, the person he made, instead of allowing the things that you've been through to just mold you and, and create this person that's not even really you. And that's actually also disqualifying you for what God have for you. And the thing about taking stuff from the enemy, right, is that you thank God for stuff from the enemy. And, 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 and guess what? The enemy don't have no problem with that. He don't need to take no credit for that. Guess what he don't want to do? He just not trying to take credit for what he do. He'll love it when you thank God for the wrong man coming into your life, the wrong woman coming into your life. Oh, thank God. She, she looked good. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. She bad. Thank you, Jesus. She got all the body parts I love. Thank you, Jesus. You know what I like, God? Hmm. Did God give you what your, what your, what your body like? Your eyes like, or your spiritual eyes like? Who sent that? Ask stuff. Ask people. Who sent you? How did you get to me? How did you find me? What, why do you want to be in contact with me? This is what happened when you're in God's presence. God will start to, because t- the Bible tells us to test the spirit by the spirit, the Holy Spirit. We get the Holy Spirit by being in the presence of God. When we're in God's presence, then we understand what God's heart is. When we understand what God's heart is, we understand motives that are not from God. We understand things that are not from God. So if you are not in his presence, you will not be able to understand or even be able to identify things that are not from him. That's another benefit of being in his presence. I know I stopped on a point. That's a whole nother show right there. But guess what? We're being reduced to nothing. Allow yourself to be reduced to nothing in God's presence. Allow yourself that. It's called humbling yourself. It's okay. Humble yourself under God so that he don't have to humble you. Come and tell you something. If God have to humble you, it's going to be rough. Because his hand is heavy. 
when he put his hand on your head and mess you down and you start losing all your stuff because you just think you're just so amazing. You're just so funny. You're just so talented. You got so much game. You look so good. You're so sexy. You're so fine. Uh, God have to show you who he is. And when you get in his presence and you see that for yourself, he don't have to show you that in a way to break you down. He's just revealing that in a way that's going to elevate you. But that's something that you don't have to catch once you once you start to develop a relationship with him so that you get in his presence often enough to benefit from that. When you don't humble yourself, you hurt yourself. Humble yourself. Put God above you. When you're in his presence, thank him for who he is. Thank him for creating you. Thank you for giving him. Thank, thank him for giving you a purpose. Ask him what that is. Continually seek him for that. Because if you don't let God use you, the enemy will. It ain't number two options. Even if you just use it for, oh, I mean, the devil ain't using me. Well, guess what? God ain't either. And only a person that possibly can do that is the enemy. And guess what? The enemy, he's very focused. She's very focused. It could be a he or a she that show up in your life. They're very focused. They can bring good. They can bring all this stuff to you and you won't even understand it. It's the enemy. Why? Because you haven't been in the presence of God. The presence of God will get revealed wisdom. You will get wisdom, get spiritual insight to being in the presence of God. Jesus, I thank him. It's amazing because he's kept me from some things just by being in his presence, just by being on my face in his face, kept me out the wrong people face. A lot of people who are after this and after that, they're, they're, they're after certain things and they're not after the presence of God. They still suffer. They're suffering and they can't understand why. Because they have everything they want. They're real good at getting it. They just think they need more and more and more and more of that. But I'm here to tell you that you need more of God. You got to get in his presence. How do you get in his presence? You pray. You talk to him. You read the Bible. And if you don't know what to read, read Proverbs and read Psalms. Proverbs are instructions from God, how to be, what your moral situation should look like. Psalms gives you comfort and it tells you what the promises of God are. It tells you the benefits of God. It helps you learn how to pray. Even my favorite is Psalms 27. If you want to take some um, suggestions on where to start, Psalm 27 and Psalm 62. Those are my two favorite. I tell everybody about those. Those are two that I read every day, all day, and they, that's all I had. That's all I needed. And that kept me in his presence. That kept me thinking about him. And that's what we all need. And there are benefits to making sure that we do that. So before I go, I want to pray again. I want to pray because there are some people who feel like they can't get in God's presence. They don't know how to do it. They can't do it. Or they may have been, they may be weighed down by their sin. They may feel like they can't do it because of stuff they've done. And I'm here to tell you that don't let the enemy talk you out of talking to God. Don't let the enemy tell you, be, be, be all in your ear about what God is going to do because he's, he's trying to make sure that you never get to what God has for you. Even if that's peace. Cause guess what? The enemy can't give you peace. Can't give you love. It can't give you joy. Okay. So I just thank God for you. Father God, I just pray right now, God, that you will touch the listeners right now, that you will touch them, keep them and cover them. God, allow them to experience your presence. God, I pray, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit will visit them. God, that they will hear you. They will see you and they will know it's you, Father God, and they will allow you to speak into their life. Lord God, give them the humility, allow them to be humble enough to hear what it is that they need to do in order to get even more close to you and even more revelation from you, God. I pray, Lord God, that they will love you the way I do and that they will understand who you are and that the presence, your presence will just bless them and that they will yearn to be in your presence more, that their appetite will change for life. The things that they want to do, they won't, they won't want to do anymore that are not for you and that they will develop an appetite and a hunger to do things for you and to serve you and to seek you. And I just thank you, Lord God, for being available to them as they seek you, as they come for you. And we just love you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen.
I thank you for listening. This show is brought to you again by Next Level Church, Morrow, Georgia, located at 1355 Mount Zion Road. Each and every Sunday, 2 p.m., the services are amazing. Also, every Thursday at 7 p.m., make sure you join us one time, two time, three time. In the name of Jesus, thank you for listening to Mass Exodus Radio. This is Sayuri Smith Timmons. I'll let your girl next week where we'll be talking about Exodus from something else. Okay. All right. Bye.